Okay, I want to try and give you an overview of how I trace um, Java code. So we're going to start out with a piece of scratch paper. And the scratch paper is going to be for keeping track of the methods um, that we're running and our local variables. So we'll know what method are we running, where are we in that method, and what are our local variables. And we're going to draw our objects out here outside of the scratch paper because the scratch paper is going to be for our local variables, for our methods. The methods are sort of short-lived, but when you make an object, it pretty much sticks around forever unless nobody's pointing at it anymore. So, for example, here's one object. I drew this little crown on the object um, just to show that it's special. And, you know, somewhere earlier on the scratch paper, um, it looks like this object was um, called SWRO for no apparent reason, except that those happen to be the first four keys that somebody clicked on the keyboard. But so there's an object already in this diagram just so we can make um, show some interesting stuff going on. Um, called SWRO. SWO is the, SWRO is the local variable here, and it has an arrow out into object space, because remember, object space is kind of everything that's not our scratch paper, pointing at this object. We don't actually know what type it is in this, in this example. Now, whenever you're going to start to run a new method, um, you're going to draw a horizontal line and then write the method name under the line on the scratch paper. So if suppose we said swro.muzzle, and then these are the parameters. So we're running the muzzle method on the swro object with these parameters. So we're going to draw our line, and then we're going to write the name of the method. So the name of the method is muzzle. So, so far, so good. Next, we're going to write the word this on our paper. And we're going to point this to whatever object ran this method. So um, in this case, we have swro.muzzle. So whatever comes before the dot, that's this. So we're going to point that arrow there. OK, next step. Oops, not next step yet. Note again that the objects are not on the scratch paper, right? The objects are in this long lived area out here where I also happen to be writing my notes, but you'll deal with that. OK, the next thing we need to do is we need to look at our method and see, does it have any parameters? And we know it does already. Let's actually look at the code here, because um, we need to look at the formal parameters here, these names. And we have alpha and beta. And so we're going to create local variables for any parameters with the formal names in the order they appear. That's very important. So alpha comes first. We create alpha on the left. Beta comes next, we create beta to the right of that. If there were more, we would just keep writing them on our scrap paper from left to right. Okay. Then we're going to take a look at the actual parameters. Remember, the formal ones are the names, what we name it, right? The actual are the things we're passing in, in the order they appear. So we have 27 comma 13. So we're going to do the 27 in the first box, no matter what it's called, and the 13 in the second box, no matter what it's called. So the 27 goes into alpha, the 13 goes into beta. Looking pretty good. OK, so now we can finally start running our method. But as we do so, if we have any new variables that we make within um, our method, our local variables, we're going to declare them. They go on the scratch paper, too. So this says double gamma gets 5. So we make a new box for a double called gamma, and it gets 5. And the next line of code says Boolean delta. So we make a new um, variable for a Boolean called delta. And because it doesn't get initialized to any value, there's no initial assignment statement, that gets false because Booleans default to starting out as false if you don't tell them that there's something otherwise. Um, now we've got multi gets alpha times beta, right? So evaluate the right hand side, put it in the left. This actually declares. The variable makes a box for it, type int multi, and then it evaluates the right-hand side. Alpha times beta, it looks in here, oh good, I have an alpha, and the beta is 27 and 13, so I'm going to multiply it out and put it into multi. Okay. Now, when you're running the code, if you need to evaluate a variable, first you look on the scratch paper, just like we did with the alpha and beta. 
Um, but you're only going to look in this muzzle section. You can't look above or um, below it while we're running the muzzle method. The only boxes we're allowed to look for or the only boxes, boxes we're allowed to look at are these ones, the ones that are in our local space here and anything that follows this. And we start in our local space, but if we can't find one, then we follow this. So for example, um, let's suppose I have the code beta gets alpha. Well, if I have the code beta gets alpha, it says, what's alpha? No problem. Here it is. It's 27. What's beta? No problem. Here is it. Here it is. Let's put 27 in there, right? Evaluate the right-hand side, put it in the left. So now we got a 27 in there. That's great. Um, what if we say alpha gets theta? Well, the system says, what's theta? Can't find it in our local variables. So at that point, it says, let's check this. Let's see if it's in the this object somehow. And it looks in there. And we're just going to pretend for this example that theta is in the object. Somehow we can see it. And it has the value 10. So then we need to put that into alpha. And again, we say, what's alpha? Oh, there it is. Let's put 10 in it. And there we go. OK. And for some reason, that popped up again. Yay. OK, you saw this before. You see it again. It's very exciting. OK, now let's suppose that while we were in here, there was a line of code that wanted to run another method. So pretend we have a sun object. See, look, here's we have a, a local variable called sun. It's of type circle. Um, and it points off to an object that's way off the screen. You can't see it. Ha ha. Um, but we want to run the slow move horizontal method on this sun object. Um, and we're currently in the middle of muzzle. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, I'm in the middle of muzzle. And right now, maybe I'm on line 63. So I'm going to write down, OK, I'm going to pause muzzle at line 63. And then we're going to go back to the very beginning of this. We're going to draw the line. We're going to write the name of the new method, which is going to be slow move horizontal, blah, 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 blah. And we keep going. And while we're in here, we can't look at anything above the line. So we don't know what delta is. We don't know what gamma is. We don't know what alpha is unless we have one in here or we have one in our this. OK? But let's just pretend that we didn't need to call another method. Um, so I can show you what happens at the end of running your method. Um, and the very last step is if you happen to have a return value, you have to send it back kind of above the line. The only thing that can cross lines are return values. So for example, um, this code, which you can't see here, unfortunately, at the bottom says return true. So up popped the true. And after you do that returning, then you cross out all this junk below the line. So all of this stuff just gets crossed out. Wasn't that a nice animation? Um, and it's gone. It's as though we never did it. Um, I've talked about crumpling pieces of paper, but you crumple the paper, you cross it out. It's done, OK? And if we had paused a previous method to start this one up, then remember how we wrote, I've stopped online, blah, for our example? Then the previous method would say, I've stopped online, blah, and you'd keep going from there. So that's it.